I'm personally a big fan of dragons. This banner hangs above my bed. This was my Halloween costume from a few years ago. Welcome to the House of Dragons with Rivaz of the Claw. Rivaz of the Claw is one black red for a Viachino Warlock. It has menace, and when you tap it, you add two mana in any combination of colors. Spend this mana to only cast dragon spells. On top of that, once per turn, we can bring a dragon from our graveyard to the battlefield just by paying its mana cost. So two things here, we can ramp out huge dragons and bring them back from the graveyard. The real question is what bombs are we going to ramp out and bring back from the graveyard? Let's take a look. First up, there's Balefire Dragon. When this dragon connects, it's gonna deal that much damage to each creature that player controls. Massive board wipe. Lathless, the Dragon Queen, is gonna give us a massive token army of dragons every time we play one and gonna pump our dragons. Colagon, the Storm's Fury, can be dashed out for a surprise attack, and whenever a dragon attacks, it's going to give all of our creatures plus one, plus zero. Utvara Hellkite is going to give us another great attack trigger. Every time a dragon attacks, we get a 6-6 six, six dragon creature token. Get in for that damage. There have been more powerful dragons mentioned, but I love Dragon Tyrant. This 10 mana is flying, trample, and double strike, and you can pump it, but there is an upkeep cost to keep them around. Ancient Copper Dragon is the smog of MTG. Every time it attacks and deals combat damage to a player, we roll a d20 and create a million treasure tokens. Powerful. Ancient Copper Dragon is also powerful. When it deals combat damage, we roll that d20, then we can reanimate a ton of stuff from everybody's graveyards. Of course, Scytherix is a great finisher. It has Infect, and you can give it haste, and all the other dragons will pump them up for one-shot kills. Dragons are super expensive to cast, therefore we need to ramp into them and ramp quickly. First up, there's Dragon Lord Servant. This Goblin Shaman will reduce the mana cost of our dragons by one generic to get them in a little bit sooner. Dragon Speaker Shaman is an oldie but a goodie. This Barbarian Shaman reduces the cost of dragons by two generic mana, which is a huge amount of reduction. Dragon's Horde is a great mana rock. It's going to get gold counters every time a dragon ETBs, and we can remove the gold counters to draw a card, and it gives one mana of any color, but still run all the other good mana rocks. Now it's time to get into the fast mana. We've got Jessica's Well. It's going to let us exile cards and play them, and add a ton of red mana to our mana pool. I've seen Mana Geyser give as many as 20 red mana to an opponent from all my lands being tapped, so this is explosive out of nowhere. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Dark Ritual. This is the original Ritual and fast mana card from Magic's history. Pyretic Ritual is another ritual effect, just a little worse version of Dark Ritual, but just for red mana. Desperate Ritual is a functionally similar version to Pyretic Ritual, but it does have Splice on the Arcane, and that absolutely does not matter in this deck. Doesn't matter at all. Then we have Cabal Ritual. It's a little worse than Dark Ritual. However, if we have Threshold, we're gonna add five black mana to our mana pool, which is very explosive for just a two mana investment. But why are we running all these fast mana cards? I'll tell you why. We're gonna storm in and win the game. I'm talking about Dragon Storm. This nine mana sorcery is gonna let us search our library for a dragon and put it into play, but it has Storm. So we run a bunch of those fast mana effects and we get a ton of dragons in out of nowhere. We've got some other dragons that function as excellent removal, just like Balefire Dragon. First up, Flame Blast Dragon. This is Fireball on a Stick. When it attacks, you can play X in a red and deal X damage to any target. Vampiric Dragon functions as some great targeted removal. Especially if we try to storm off, but we don't have Dragon Storm, we can just dump that mana into his activated ability. If we are getting overwhelmed by a token army, Deathbringer Regent works as damnation on a stick. When it ETBs, destroy all other creatures if there are five or more on the battlefield. Of course, you should still run that good single targeted removal and board wipes. Here are a few examples. Of course, dragons are greedy by nature. Therefore, we have some that like to draw cards. We have Null Spine Dragon. This is what Spine Rock Null is. During Lorwyn, but during Shadowmoor, it transforms into this. This is a wheel effect when it deals combat damage. Dragon Mage is a dragon wizard with some excellent flavor text. Whenever it connects, it becomes Wheel of Fortune for everybody. So get that hand refilled and that graveyard filled up. We have some other great card advantage effects. Magus of the Wheel is a Wheel of Fortune to help fill up our graveyard. Outpost Siege is flavorful, and Phyrexian Arena is a classic. This deck can also win through a pretty excellent combo. Pretty old school. That's the combination of World Gorger Dragon and Animate Dead. World Gorger Dragon is a nightmare dragon with flying and trample, and when it enters the battlefield, exile all other permanents you control. When it leaves, return them to the battlefield. Animate Dead is an enchantment that brings things back from the graveyard. This combo will give you infinite ETBs with World Gorger Dragon. How will those ETBs let us win? I'll show you. We need to convert that enter the battlefield of World Gorger into damage. This way we have Sarkin's Unsealing and Warstorm Surge. Sarkin's Unsealing will wipe the board of all of your opponent's stuff and deal some damage to him with World Gorger 7 power, 
Warstorm Surge will deal seven to a target of our choice. Dragon Tempest will also turn those ETBs into damage, but on top of that, it's gonna give all of our flying creatures haste, which dragons, they do fly. And then we have the Blade Wings in this deck. Blade Wing the Risen is gonna reanimate dragons and pump them. Blade Wing Deathless Tyrant is gonna make us an army of zombie knights. Since Rivaz lets us play cards from our graveyard, we need to fill it up. First up, Faithless Looting. This is a classic one mana sorcery, draw two, discard two, and you can flash it back to really fill up the bin. Entomb is gonna let us tutor the dragon we need for any situation into our graveyard, so we can reanimate it with Rivaz or any of our other great reanimation effects. Buried Alive is a three mana sorcery. It'll let us put three creatures into our graveyard, and then we can bring them out with any reanimation effect to really swing the tide of the game. Altar of Dementia will let us sacrifice our big dragons to mill a ton of cards, and then we can bring that dragon back with Rivaz, so that way we have a full bin with a ton of options. We need to bring our dragons back to life. Rivaz will do it, but we need way more options. Here they are. We've already mentioned Animate Dead. I won't go into it too deeply, just an enchantment that brings creatures back from the graveyard. Of course, Reanimate is a classic. It's a one mana sorcery that lets us pull any creature card out of any graveyard at the expense of life, but life doesn't matter when you're winning the game. Dance of the Dead is another two mana enchantment, very similar to Animate Dead, but we have to pay mana to untap the creature, and the creature gets buffed. I want to welcome everybody to the House of the Dragons. If you enjoyed this deck tech, please give me a like and consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments below how you would build this deck and what I can do to improve my content. Thanks for watching.